tailgaters, Ross of the Pigskin Tales podcast here. The buzz of summer and the anticipation of the college football season is in the air. It's the perfect time to gear up with Homefield, a premium collegiate apparel brand based in Indianapolis. They have over 150 plus college designs to choose from, each one showcasing a unique part of your team's history. My personal experience with Homefield has been exceptional. Their apparel is comfortable and their vintage designs bring back fond memories of my alma mater. So as the excitement for the upcoming college football season builds, make sure to visit Homefield's website at homefieldapparel.com. Get ready today for the upcoming season and represent our favorite teams in style with Homefield. Again, that's homefieldapparel.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, sports fans. Welcome to another edition of Yesterday Sports on the Sports History Network. Today, in part two of Why I Miss 1970s Football, I'm going to do a little complaining, and I know I'll probably sound like a grumpy old man, and maybe I am. But what's with the graphics all over the TV screen? I find all the blue lines, yellow lines, and red lines very distracting. I don't need a yellow line to tell me where the first down marker is located. If it's first and 10, and the ball is on the 22-yard line, it's not that hard to figure out that a team needs to get to the 32-yard line to get a first down. Then there's the announcers, particularly the analysts. And I won't say all of them, but some of them just never shut up. The incessant talking is unnecessary. I don't need them to explain every little detail of the game. The average fan doesn't care. And for the most part, the hardcore fan already knows the game. Take a breath and let the game speak for itself. Then there's the never-ending complaining by quarterbacks and receivers. Some call it gamemanship. I call it complaint. I won't say it's all the quarterbacks, but a lot of them are in the referee's ear every time they get hit. Okay, sometimes they do get hit a little bit late, but rule changes put a premium on protecting the quarterback. So late hits aren't happening as often as they used to. Quarterbacks of yesteryear were the target of many cheap shots, and they rarely complained. It's good that the NFL is doing more to protect quarterbacks from unnecessary late hits and cheap shots, but you can only do so much. Football is a game of hitting, and quarterbacks are going to get roughed up, just like every other player on the field. If a quarterback complained back in the 1970s, and most didn't, that only made defenders want to hit them harder. That's just how it was back then. What about all the ways quarterbacks can stop the clock now? They can spike the ball into the ground and intentionally ground the ball as long as they're out of the pocket? None of that was allowed up until the 1990s, and in my opinion... These types of rules just cheapen the game. Then there's that crazy tuck rule. What's that all about? Who came up with that one? It used to be that if a defender knocked the ball out of your hand before you could throw it, it was a fumble. It seems pretty obvious. Why complicate things? The receivers are even worse. They complain to the referee about interference almost every time they don't catch the ball. In my opinion, interference should only be called when it's obvious. There's always going to be some pushing, grabbing, and shoving, such that you could call interference on almost every pass play, if you wanted to. John Madden once said that if he were coaching today, he'd have his quarterback throwing long on almost every play, because half the time, defensive pass interference is called. Then there's those uniforms. Ugly. Some games look like the teams are at a pajama party. All green, all blue, or all red. 
How am I supposed to take the game seriously when the players are wearing uniforms that look like pajamas? In my opinion, the 1970s had the sharpest looking uniforms in NFL history. I can't think of any team that had a bad looking uniform. Then there's the excessive celebrating, including all the dancing, chest thumping. I have nothing against the player getting excited or showing genuine emotion. But the excess of showboating and taunting are just immaturity and poor sportsmanship. How about showing a little humility? Make a great play, get back in the huddle, and make another great play. That's what they're paying you for. Was there showboating in the 1970s? Yes, there was some, but not to the degree that there is today. The excessive celebrating really started in the 1980s with Mark Gastineau and his sack dance. I was as against it then as much as I am now. Show some professionalism, sportsmanship, and class. Then there's those commercials. The commercials are way too many and some are just so bad. I don't know how anyone can sit through all those commercials. In the 1970s, they would show two or three commercials and then get back, get you back to the game. Today, it seems they spend more time on commercials than they do on the game. They used to take a brief time out to show a couple of commercials. But today, they take a brief time out from the commercials to show you the game. When I was still watching football, I would usually record the games that I was interested in so I could fast forward through the commercials and it would usually only take about an hour and a half to watch the game without commercials. Then there's those Super Bowl halftime shows. Up until the mid-1970s, the halftime show at the Super Bowl consisted of bringing out the marching band. Once the band was done performing, they got back to playing football. Now the halftime show has become such a spectacle that the game doesn't resume until about 40 minutes later, and the players usually return to a stadium filled with smoke. Well, I've done enough complaining for today. Next week, we'll have part three. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care, and God bless. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude, and I wanted to thank you for stopping by to listen to another episode here on the Sports History Network. Our podcasters are passionate about uncovering and sharing sports stories from yesteryear. And if you didn't know it already, we have over 30 shows across the network covering all sorts of sports history topics. In fact, here's a glimpse into one of our awesome podcasts here on the network. Hello, football friends. This is Darren Hayes of the Pigskin Dispatch Podcast, and I'd like to invite you to the portal of positive football history, Pigskin Dispatch and pigskindispatch.com. We talk about everything that centers around the game of American football, expert discussions, the origins of the games, the great players, teams, and coaches, and more, and some great guests and insights from experts. We have new episodes three to four times a week, and you can find us on sportshistorynetwork.com, pigskindispatch.com, or your favorite podcast provider. How about that? I bet you're super hyped to go listen to that new podcast, right? Well, to learn about this show and all the other podcasts on the network, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Again, that's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Head over there today to find your next favorite sports history podcast.